Hey yo, Ranger Liz here with a really big video. I just got done interviewing Hasbro. Whoa, four years. I've been doing this for four years. Senpai noticed me. I gotta be on the fan wall at PulseCon. Uh, they sent me an email a few days later saying, hey, would you like to interview the brand team? Uh, some of them about the releases. Oh my gosh, of course I had to say yes. And I had the opportunity today, it was Wednesday the 3rd, to sit down with John Warren and John Firestone from Hasbro. John Warren's the product design and John Firestone is global brand marketing. Uh, I got to talk to him about the figures that are coming out and Zed. And at one point we were talking about astronomy hair color. So look, stay tuned guys. I hope you enjoy. Thank you to everybody who helped get me to this point. I did it y'all. Yeah. All right, there we go. The audio is working now. <laughs> hey, Liz. So it's good to see you again in person. Hello. Hello. This is, uh, <laughs> this is amazing. Hi everyone. Hey, welcome in. Welcome in. Liz, nice to meet you. Thanks so much for jumping on. Uh, thing I, I just gotta say it's, it's wonderful. Um, to get to, to meet you guys. This is the first time I've ever gotten to, to interview you. So thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, this just means the world to me. So, so thank you for giving me the chance to get to speak to you about this. Um, you know, that's weird. I feel like I've talked to you already because I've watched your channel before and <laughs> it's like, I think you just, you, it's an, it's an interesting thing to, you know, maybe in my head, I feel like I, I already know you. That's, it's just, it's cool. Thank it. It's good to finally meet you, I guess. Yeah. Well, I feel like I, since I get to watch all the other stuff, I feel like I know you too, just because I get to see your other <laughs> interviews. Yeah. Um, I get that. It's it's weird, with this, especially the Transformers thing. People are like, oh, yeah, we talk. I'm like, I don't think we have. <laughs> I, um, wow. So we just had a really fantastic thing um, with PulseCon, and we got some really awesome reveals, and I get a few minutes to sit and talk to you about uh, these great things. We answer, uh, ask a few questions, and um, yeah, just in general, thank you so much for allowing me to uh, to get to chat with you. Um, yeah, no problem. Do you, do you mind? Let me, uh, if we could wait just a sec for um, my colleague, John. Sure, sure. Yeah, we're we're kind of like They Might Be Giants, where everybody's named John. <laughs> That's, I feel like in the Toku fandom, a lot of people are named Chris. <laughs> it's true. You... <laughs> <laughs> I, I I saw I was like who's gonna be in John and John I'm like okay well it makes my like life easy for me <laughs> especially because you don't have to I don't have to spell it out loud and ask which one of you has the H and which yeah I'm the one I'm the one with the H but yeah Zoom makes it a little easier you guys having a good week so far mine was quiet until my old cat started yelling in the background so <laughs> I had to go give her a treat so she would quiet it up a little bit but no things things are good you know it's it's uh. I'm looking forward to, you know, when things, when it's safe for everybody to gather again and we can start to have things that are more in person. You know, I miss, I miss Comic-Con and I've always yeah. enjoyed talking to fans one-on-one -on -one, um, and getting that connection. And it's great to do interviews like this because you, in some ways you can reach more people and get opinions, but um, having the chance to meet people and, talk to them one-on-one -on -one and having the ability to see they see you as just like another person doing their job and it, it helps break through a lot of those um those walls and it also allows us to kind of really hear firsthand like i don't know if you hear everybody talking about phantom rangers something or another like hey what so let's talk about phantom rangers gun it wasn't right right and you guys <laughs> did the thing that came with this with it was in the video game and you didn't do the one that was in the show. If you hear that like 30 times over the course of the convention, it's good anecdotal evidence that maybe like if we put, if we put an in-space accessory pack out someday, maybe we should throw in Phantom Rangers right pistol or something just to I, talk geek shop with you. That's, that's usually kind of how it goes. And it's harder to do that online. Like you get, you'll get a tweet or you'll hear something online and somebody's it, but there's so many sources that it doesn't, there's no, there's no funnel point for it, you know? Right. Although you, you had me an accessory pack. I am pretty sure with Lightning Collection by about wave two, I'm like, okay, one day we're going to get Astronema. And this is my personal, I want a head pack. I need like five <laughs> <Loretta does too. laughs> Astronema heads, all the different wigs, 
or maybe just like an astronomer five pack of just all of her different outfits i'm just saying i have i have the one i'm getting the next one it's not like i'm gonna stop buying astronomers <laughs> throwing that out there yeah no taking it, notes taking notes yeah definitely <laughs> taking notes look i have pink hair i appreciate a good female character especially one with amazing hair but oh, you don't yes. have a cybernetic side of face though if you did that it would the, the look would be complete how do you know <laughs> <laughs> cyborg liz i'm taking over now john welcome uh we've uh we're just geeking out over some stuff um but yeah i would love to uh let's let's just keep talking about power ranger figures there's just more yeah, of us now do it uh so i'm here with john warden and john firestone from hasbro my name is ranger liz and uh the the first like you know questions and um you guys are moving into two new series with the late the wave of lightning collection now other than you know like wave one or two the two new series in one new wave um could you just talk about like not just the excitement but was there any unknown or anything you ran into with trying to go to two new series in just one wave so I'm glad that you're into it because we are too. This is this a lot of it is inside of the mind of Loretta, and she, you know she's she's the lead on Lightning Collection. Um, before our interview, I had a chance to talk to her and kind of pick her brain a little bit, and she mentioned that she said that these have been in the plans for a while. You know, we've you know John and I have been talking about them and trying to figure out how do we activate some of these other seasons. A big way to do that is by looking at. Um, looking at anniversaries. So we know that the Wild Force has an anniversary coming up um, and activating, you know, some of the cool characters from this season. It, it's, it's a dance of like, when you do the character, can some of the pieces be reused later? Um, yeah. Do you have the right mix of um, types of Rangers in one wave, the right, the right colors? Because you want to launch it too many of one color or too many of similar um, ranger powers or something accessories are too similar so there's there's this like spider web of things that's happening and and i think when you look at um dino fury it fits right in there dino fury is one of those yeah. seasons since since john and i started this we're like this is going to be big it's great the actors are awesome they're super the suits fun. The suits are so rad. I mean, Ryu Soldier is amazing, and there's all this great content. As soon as I came on to Power Rangers, I was like, these, these guys are epic. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to it when you're designing these characters, and, and um, I wish Loretta was here to talk a little bit more about it. But, yeah, it's, it's just exciting, and I feel like it's just the beginning. You guys are going to see more of this type of sensitivity to other seasons because we – we know how popular MMPR is and how, how it started and shaped the legacy of Power Rangers, but we don't want to forget about some of these other seasons that fans love and are arguably incredible content like RPM or, you know, Wild Force and things like that that are just really amazing cool. suits. If I could also put in for Super Mega Force uh, yellow. Oh, I'm, totally. I don't know how many copies of that figure I would buy, <laughs> but it would be a lot. It's hard to pull off Space Pirate and have it work, and she does it. <laughs> but the suits are amazing. They are. They are. They are amazing. You know, it's weird too, and I, I feel the same way about Megazords too, because I like really geeked out, and I don't want to go go off interview, but it's like um, when we looked at all of the Megazords, there's so much out there that like sometimes like some seasons with the best megazords don't necessarily have the best ranger suits and things like that so mm -hmm. that there's there's opportunities to really like jump around in that world too so we're really we have a philosophy where we're just trying to make it work with it like john and i look at anniversaries and things like that so more to come but i think as you think about the the long game of lightning collection that's kind of our philosophy behind it that's well you also announced another of my favorite seasons is dino charge and, uh -huh. I, and I yeah. love Dino Charge Pink, so that was a huge excitement for me because I have all the other Dino Charge ones, which makes me go, okay, you know, eventually you're going to finish the team, and eventually you'll get Dakota, and I will be the happiest girl in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And I'm sorry that wasn't a pre-approved question because it wasn't a question, but I, it, you have <laughs> to, to let us eventually, <laughs> in the law of numbers, you have to get to him. It's true. 
It's true. This is... And that's, I love this interview so far because this is very much like what I would talk to somebody at Comic Con about. This is like, <laughs> they all, like somebody would, would ask me questions and they would sneak in their favorite. And they would just like, yeah. I, yeah, okay. this is this this is the first interview I've had with you guys. So this is a little more my I just like to have conversations and and just get to like know it. people more yeah. just like right. not just with the brand, but like, let's get to know the brains behind everything. Um, I, I had a question. I was just going to ask, you know, the driving factor of lightning figure selection, such as nostalgia, completing teams. I know you've you've mentioned that a lot about the different accessories and whatnot. But is there anything else that you would want to add that maybe goes into why a certain figure gets chosen next or, or the next wave? Um, no, I mean, other than what I pointed to in the beginning, like uh, the, the waves very much have to do with um, the balance of color, um, the stylistic approach to what is on shelf at the same time of the costumes, the character mm -hmm. types, the archaeotypes that are there and how they might all play against each other as well as fan popularity um deep cuts versus general audience cuts and things like that so it's just trying to get that right mix um yeah. and the with the cog so the cog was the other one it's a single release which is nice like for people who want to do army builders or people who maybe didn't even just want to pick up the two-pack but one of the big thing uh for fans who are you know those gotta finish everything was the tonfas so can I ask, so Rocky didn't get his tonfas before no, all the other characters. Yeah. When did you realize like, oh crap, we, we got to give him his tonfas. And how did you just eventually come to the conclusion to put him in with the cog? So, um, you know, we've, we've been on the brand, John, for about a year now. Um, philo philosophically, right. when we look at the entire, um, and our, our influence has been able just over the past, you know, couple year couple years, we're trying to look at, you know, better understanding why um, fans collect what they want. So part of it is, you know, the accessories, some of them are characters and the people care collect for all different reasons. But when um, Loretta came onto the brand, she was she Rocky was already released and she knew that people were wondering where the tonfas were. And we when we looked at the balance of the line again to go back to like the perfect mix and mm -hmm. John, John and Loretta and I were talking mm -hmm. about things re-releasing a cog made sense in that wave to have a troop builder and to kind of get a second bite of the apple of that tool for people maybe who weren't able to get the two pack or they wanted to build army build and this was a perfect place for us to put those tonfas in there to kind of um allow fans to have be, who are completists to get those the, mm -hmm. the weapons from zeo but also gives you a chance to get another army builder and everybody loves troop builders right <laughs> that's true plus with the heads they have the two different heads so i mean it, you gotta have super creepy. Yeah, they yeah. do that whole like zoom in and they surprise. They are, they are really creepy. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna we have a few minutes, so I'm gonna I do want to skip in. Uh, if there are any, you know, I know you can't really give me any hints, but this new deluxe line, I'm really excited about it. Not only are we gonna get to see more monsters, Piranha's head personally terrified the poo out of me as a child. So thank you for <laughs> for making him. Um, but is there anything, you know, bigger, maybe even like battleizers or any like other types of figures, not, not, not just speeders? Well, well I, I mean, that's yeah, kind of what ahead. Deluxe is all about. It's about giving us the flexibility to get into some of that cool and different and really unique and special, uh, whether it's armor or vehicles that is you, like iconic to Power Rangers, like you don't see that elsewhere. And so the Deluxe assortment lets us get there. And it's it's a cool tool that way. So uh, there's nothing really to announce right now about it. You know, like we don't want to give anything away, but it's something that we're excited about the opportunity to get into. That's it's gonna be a great yeah. the, great the monsters thing too. It's interesting because a lot of those monsters they're literally called monsters of the week. They would show up once. So it's it's trying to get under into the fan zeitgeist and understand like what kind of shared experiences like your Prontus head experience might exist in something like that and in the fan audience and like pumpkin wrapper is a great example everybody remembers the the, the pumpkin, pumpkin head heads yeah putties um, and stuff so it's like there's there there are things that people remember and it's like whether it's in the toys or in the show there there are things that made imp common impressions and i i'm always sort of listening and Loretta's always listening, John's always listening to like what fans are saying and, and also trying to learn 
from those common moments. And, and that's, I think that's what drives a lot of decision-making, not just in the normal six inch line, but also like in the deluxe waves as well. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to put it to this is the, the last question. It's most what Lord said, honestly, I, it's crazy. We talk so much about the figures because Lord said helmet was my favorite oh, yeah. part of the whole thing. It's amazing <laughs> looking. Um, you basically made a helmet out of like a helmet head, right? <laughs> we there, had this conversation at work, dude, what to call it. There's it, it's, it's a helmet. It's, it's, it's hard. Head? It's really tall. How in the world? I, I just love behind the scenes stuff. What was it like trying to you usually make ranger helmets? That's not a ranger helmet. Like, what was it like trying to make a head helmet, squishy, hard, tall thing? Well, I mean, philosophically, I think, John, you want to speak to just like the idea of kicking it off. It's something different, right? Yeah, it was uh, it was a cool way to get into really like the villain side and do something a little bit different than just our, our usual lightning collection ranger helmets, which are awesome in their own way, but something that was so iconic in Zed and doing it to the best of our ability and getting something out there that we knew people would get excited about was really uh, super exciting just as, yeah, there were some challenges, but it was the opportunity to do something cool like that is it's something that gets us out of bed. You know, yeah, we want to find a way to build something like that. It, and, and for me, I'm I'm kind of an 80s guy. Well, I'm just a pop culture guy. I, you know, in the 90s when Power Rangers was on, I was in college listening to hip hop and skateboarding. <laughs> but like, I remember like my my younger friends, little brothers and things. And so I, I remember Lord Zed thinking like, wow, what the heck's up with that guy? And like, it, yeah. it, it was creepy, but he was the Skeletor almost of, of the universe. Like he was a the Megatron. And I feel like, when you have the, all these great ranger helmets, you can only like jump in and do those those bad guys as well. But from a production standpoint, um, the designer who worked on this also his name's Bill. He he was in the video. He he also worked on a bunch of um, other things for other brands as well, namely like Star Wars and things like that. So he's used a lot of this uh, institutional knowledge to do the voice changer and kind of understand all of that stuff. And the vet, and there's but there's a lot of things. You have textures. You have the spongy brain, which it, when you touch it, it's gross. It feels like I don't. It's an open cavity brain, oh. and then you've got the you've got the intense like metalized feature of the face, which is there. He is also mm. oh, yeah. I, I love this guy. I had I, mean, I had one of them up there until I I started playing with Phantom Ranger. So now yeah. Phantom Ranger is taking Zed spot up on myself. But yeah. I. I love I love just the contrast of textures and then you've got the mirrored glass and when you press that you get a you get a variety of phrases but you can also like you know hear Zed's voice and I just think it's it's hilarious to be able to have that if your friends come over like hey guys check this out and you come out wearing Zed's head and you're like it's, it's 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 you you win you and win the, the timing party. the timing just lined up perfectly with it because you know we had the awesome origin story revealed by boom studios we had him coming back for uh the halloween timing and the show itself so it just made sense to get set out there with a, a helmet that our fans could get into as well 100 yeah. percent. i and, see you holding up the staff though yeah i'm just saying Hasbro, Hasbro makes lightsabers they do yeah just I, you can do it, but we better get this wrapped up. I know there are other fans who are who are dying to to be able to to talk with you guys next. Uh, but I I love this. Thank you so much, um, John, John, Whitney, Shady, for for allowing me to be able to ask you some questions. This has been uh, this probably the the biggest thing I've ever done on my Power Ranger YouTube career. Um, thank you all so so much, and. Thank you. Hopefully, good talking to yeah, you. thank you for talking to us. <laughs> uh, hopefully, one day we'll get to do this again. I hope so, too. All right. All right. Thank you, Liz. Thanks so much. Have a great day, guys. You, too. Thank Bye. you. Yeah. Bye. I just want to take the end to thank my Patreons. Hope we made this as as possible. Thank you so much for watching the interview. Let me know uh, how you enjoyed it. If you'd like me to keep doing more interviews, I'm realizing that interviewing is actually really fun. It's something I like doing. So who do you want me to interview? And Maybe I'll reach out and see if I can make it a reality. But thank y'all so much for supporting me and helping me get here. Thank you to Hasbro and teams, John and John, Shady, everyone. Uh, thank y'all so much. I will see you at the next video. If no one's told you today, I love you. And I think you're awesome. Ah, keep getting it, Ranger Nation. Toodles. <laughs>